I think we've got a good solid release here from Bankman commissioned by TMC. So I for one am really pleased to see these turn up ready to run. Hi there to you, I'm Jennifer Kirk welcoming you back to the channel and uh, we're up here in the loft on Weir Yard. It's really really warm actually, I'm sure the weather has been quite hot and humid all over the UK um, but uh, we're going to be soldiering on and um, it's one of the reasons that I've not done too many project builds up here. If you've been watching the Monday Club you will have noticed that I probably looked like I was about to pass out from the heat and it's something that I do need to address up here. It's not as hot as it could be um, but um, it, it does get quite warm. So th um, what that's meant that rather than hang about up here doing build projects, I've rather focused on building up my rolling stock and locomotive collection and doing a lot of reviews of these items. And of course, there's a lot of you guys out there do rely on these to get to know about new models and uh, kind of get a really good close look at them. So I've uh, today been really pleased to finally manage to get a hold of the new released MEO 24 and a half ton mineral wagons that have been commissioned from Backman by TMC. Now I've been a customer on and off of TMC for well as long as I can remember almost. Uh, I remember when they first started and they were called the Trafford Model Centre and they were based in the Festival Village in the Trafford Centre. Now uh, they've moved since then and are now based over in Yorkshire and uh, they do uh, in the main a huge business in uh, doing custom weathering of items but they've also commissioned a lot of items of rolling stock and forthcoming is their first I believe locomotive as well uh, but these wagons the MEO 24 and a half ton mineral wagons are ones which I was turned on to quite late in the process I saw the uh, engineering prototypes and was immediately won over so uh, it's not been that long away from that point to them arriving but they were announced as arriving a few weeks earlier than expected and I've managed to lay my hands on a pair of these and bought them to add to the wagon fleet on Weir Yard. Now I've had quite a lot of commissions from TMC over the years really really pleased to be able to add the Mark 1 horse boxes, the Shunter's runner wagons um, and uh, also the 22 ton plate wagons as well. So they've really been a boon for modelers bringing a lot of these wagon types to the market and now it's the turn of the 24 and a half ton mineral wagons. I've got a pair and let's take a closer look. It was really interesting to see recently that uh, TMC had commissioned Backman to produce some of the MEO wagons. Now these are the 24 and a half ton open four wheel mineral wagons, not to be confused with the 16 tonners which Backman have had in their range since the late 1990s. And actually uh, I've got uh, somewhere in the region of 80 plus of those in different running numbers and have been really, really pleased with them. They've in many ways been some of the best wagons that Backman released early on in the branch line range. But these MEOs uh, are based on the 24 and a half ton variants. Now, not to be confused with the MDO, MDV versions, which were a 21 tonner, these were the maximum capacity of the four wheel uh, unbraked uh, mineral opens built in some large numbers but nowhere near as large in numbers as uh, the other variants. These were actually often uh, marked up to be used on very specific traffic flows but photographs do actually show that uh, more often than not they didn't actually stick to those flows. 
They're very, very visible when you see them in photographs of wagons by the yellow triangle. And uh, this was actually just to add a glance, uh, make them stand out from the slightly smaller capacity MDO type of uh, mineral wagons. And it just meant that at collieries, it was very easy for the staff to quickly tell that these could take a larger payload. Now TMC have commissioned uh, quite a few different versions of these and uh, they represent from the early period when they were first introduced there's some axle box variants some side door variants including the pressed steel door version and they take them right through to the tops period when these wagons were eventually withdrawn. Now um, I've got here two different variants. I've got 38-932Z which is the uh, coal 24 and a half ton X mineral wagon BR gray with the yellow triangle uh, which I talked about briefly in the introduction there. And then I've also got 38-933Z, which is the tops uh, lettered version, lettered up as an MEO Coal 24 wagon. And one of the reasons I've got this is actually because I really do love that kind of late period where a lot of the old wagons lasted just long enough to get a three letter tops code. And uh, I did do a video where I actually went through and spelt out what these top codes actually mean. In this particular variant, it's M for mineral open. Uh, e stands for the particular variant, the 24 and a half ton. And then O just basically means that this does not have train operated brakes. Now, uh, in the packet, I'm just going to show you there, we do actually have uh, some of the replacement couplings if you want to pose them with um, what look to be, um, are they instanter or three link couplings, something like that. And these can be added on. They don't look like, no, they're not made of chain. They are actually a one piece plastic uh, casting in there, but I suspect that they may interfere with the actual couplings, the slimline tension locks that come on these wagons. So um, I'm going to be leaving them in the boxes. They do come in the standard form factor Backman boxes, even though these are obviously quite a big wagon, they do still fit in that size box. Out of the packaging, what is immediately apparent to me is that we've got the stretcher bars between the W irons. And this is something that a lot of wagons should have, but in model form, it has tended to be omitted because these are quite fragile. So it really is nice to see that these wagons have appeared with the stretcher bars in place. Now these were actually to do with the braking system. And uh, these have got brake shoes that act on the inside face of each of the wheels. So you could imagine when the brakes are applied hard, it would have a tendency to try and push these wheels apart. And that's why these stretcher bars were here to hold the W irons together and just stop them from bowing away from each other. The braking system on these wagons is nicely done, just like we've seen on the uh, 16 ton mineral wagons. Um, and we do have a representation of the chassis, but uh, unlike uh, some other brands that haven't really gone whole hog on that. And actually, I'm quite happy with that because um, when are you going to ever see these wagons upside down? So we've got exactly what is necessary when you see side on. We've got the stretch bars, the braking detail, and we do have as well the connecting bar which goes across that connects both sides of the brakes of these wagons so that they could be actuated from both sides. So just one lever will put on all four wheels. I really do like the yellow triangle on these. Obviously when weathered up uh, on a lot of these, that kind of becomes um, almost invisible underneath the gunk. But it was a feature of the Parkside Dundas kits, which I tried building a long, long time ago. Didn't really get on incredibly well with them. But I did find the yellow triangle quite intriguing um, that I did manage to actually get on those wagons. Now, some people always start to get a bit annoyed when they see wagons which have been in kit 
uh, ranges for a long, long time when ready-to-run manufacturers bring out a ready-to-run version. And there's, there's all these these cries from the sidelines that, oh, you know, you're, you're just stealing market from the kit makers. Well, actually, i just like to say I bought kit versions of these wagons a long time ago. And all it actually managed to do was to tell me that I absolutely despised making kits and I never bothered building a wagon kit after that because I hated doing it and I'm a big advocate that if there's something in this hobby you don't like doing then just don't do it and I don't believe that ready to run wagons take away from the kit market because people who want to build kits do that for a different reason and um, it's not based on the fact that uh, you cannot get the wagons elsewhere people who build kits do it because they enjoy building kits so I for one am really pleased to see these turn up ready to run the interiors of these wagons are quite sparse, but the colour that they're actually finished in is fairly neutral uh, and uh, actually kind of just hides that space reasonably well. We do have some kind of representation of the top flap doors there, which on these wagons are actually quite large uh, due to the additional height uh, over both the MDO and the M. CO versions of these wagons um, so they do quite stand out and I suppose that insert on the inside is something that the uh, prototype wagons would have had but for me it does actually just draw attention to the fact that that's the only internal detail on these in fact we've not even got uh, any representation of the end tipping doors but on the outside, it's a very different story. We've got some really nice ribs on here and the paint finish as well brings out the sides of these wagons and for me actually really does make them look the part. The printing finish too is really nice and sharp as we've come to expect. And on this particular example, we've got the pre top three letters, but later period BR cold 24 and a half branding. And uh, we've actually got the metricated uh, weights, tear weights on there with the kilograms and the tons. And that's ton spelt T-O-N-N-E, although it is just represented with the T. And then we've got the wagon number B282217 with the N on the end there. Looking very closely at this, uh, the wagons, uh, the actual printing on these does seem to be different on both sides. Looking to this panel here, you can see it's a different shape on that side from this side. And the positioning of the lettering does seem somewhat different, notwithstanding that the diagonal white stripe is obviously denoting the tipping end of the wagon, uh, so will appear on uh, the uh, right hand side of this side and the left hand side of this side. Overall, I think we've got a good solid release here from Bankman commissioned by TMC. The buffers are correctly represented and uh, they're not spring loaded, but actually I'm not a huge fan of spring loaded buffers. I don't think that in this scale, certainly they really bring anything to the party other than additional cost. So it's nice to see that uh, uh, what we've actually got is good, solid, reliable, visually accurate buffers without going to that extra fiddly expense of making them spring. The actual underframe of the wagon is really nicely done. We've got these uh, extremely thick um, and prototypically accurate door bangers. These are the springs that when the side doors are opened, just stop it from hammering into the suspension, just kind of arrest that opening uh, fall. And uh, really, really nicely done. And I'm just looking down there. You can see they are separately applied pieces, but they are quite sturdy and they've got quite a good spring to them as well. So they are going to stand up to some knocks and bashes. I particularly like this uh, ratchet uh, mechanism in the braking system, which I'm guessing would give a greater leverage so that uh, when the handbrake was applied, you could actually get a pretty decent uh, braking force because it's uh, got to be remembered that these were probably some of the heaviest unbraked wagons when fully loaded.
Looking to the second wagon again, we've got a different uh, livery application here in terms of the uh, numbering. Got a different running number, B282827, and we've got that tops lettered code MEO. The liveries are modelled on photographs of real wagons and they have been captured really, really well. So uh, everything about this wagon, nice, authentic, and uh, I'm really, really quite taken with the brake rigging, with the brake shoes that match up with the wheel treads. Looking back to the underside, we've got uh, three whole solid metal wheels, and these are incredibly free running. And it's really what we'd expect from Backman wagons. The couplings, the standard slimline tension locks in the pockets there. The pockets themselves are a little bit obtrusive from the sides, but I can't really see any other way that they could have done this because of the extra overhang on these wagons. And it's really nicely done. I like the uh, yellow and red stripe additions to the uh, bearings on the W irons. Uh, they do, as far as I know, do two different bearing variants of this wagon across the range. And they are available in both single packs, as with these, but also double packs too. And uh, TMC are offering bespoke weathering services. And for a few pounds extra, you can have them add a real crushed coal load. So it is possible to add a lot of extra unique finish to these wagons and actually some of the weathering pictures on the TMC website of the TMC's own weathering applications do look exceptionally good for these wagons. Price wise, for the single packs we're looking at just a shade over £25 a wagon which is actually fairly reasonable when you consider the prices that some wagons are getting up to. So turning to the actual scores on these, first up is build quality. And actually, these are a pretty robust wagon. We've not had any of the detail fall off. And um, I'm particularly liking the good, solid, sturdy buffers. And those uh, stretcher bars I thought might be something that could easily get damaged. Indeed, the Parks I've done this kit was actually very prone to the plastic snapping. But there's been a very good choice of material on these and it means that these are standing up to a lot of handling. So overall I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10. Next up we come to running quality and actually I found that these ran exceptionally well here on Weir Yard. Mixed in with the MCV, MXV, MCO type wagons, they actually ran really, really well and give that much needed variety to your mineral wagon fleet for the periods from early British Rail right through to the BR Blue Tops period. So nothing really to fault. They made it through point work without any great issue. And those free running metal three hole disc wheels really did allow these wagons to trundle along just fine. There's the right amount of weight to uh, keep them on the track without becoming so heavy as to unnecessarily burden the hauling locomotive. So I'm going to give them another 9.5 out of 10. DCC fitting and innovation. Well, DCC fitting doesn't really apply on these, but I am very, very much liking the uh, plastic stretcher bars here going between the W irons. It's something that we've started to see on a few wagons, but it does actually add so much to these models when you see it in place. And it's something I would like to see added to future wagons that come forward that uh, do require them because actually visually when these wagons are running it does add quite a lot. I'm also very impressed by these door bangers. They are very robust and yet do look to be scale type thicknesses and I think really do add a great deal to this wagon. Because they are robust, they don't fall off. And also underneath, we get this really, really great and accurate brake rigging gear. So I'm going to give this a good solid 9 out of 10. 
When it comes to accuracy and quality of finish, there really isn't anything to fault on these. Everything that needs to be there is there, and I particularly like the yellow with the red stripe on the axle boxes. The yellow triangle is nice and crisp, and we've got some fine wagon specific detail across the data plates plus the wagon builder's plate there on the sole bar. So with nothing to fault, I'm going to give these the 10 out of 10. On value for money, compared to some of the other wagons of a similar size from a similar stable, these do offer great value for money. With the twin packs available plus the single packs, it's very, very quickly possible, even with the initial releases, to make up a good length of train. And actually, at £25 a pop, thereabouts, they are actually fairly reasonable value in this day and age. An extra value adding is that TMC weathering, and actually I really do like the look of what they've shown on their website. It's much, much more than just a standard blowover with an airbrush. They actually do look like well-worked wagons. So I'm going to give them a 9.4 out of 10. And that gives me a final score of 48.4. A really impressive model. And it is so, so nice to finally see this turn up ready to run. And kudos to TMC, who have commissioned this wagon from Backman, taken the risk, putting this wagon into production. And I don't think anybody who buys these will be disappointed in the slightest. And they're certainly worth checking out. I've got two in my fleet that I've bought here, but they're certainly on my radar to expand my fleet some more. Well, I hope you found that review really interesting and informative. And uh, don't forget that we've got that link in the description box that takes you to TMC to help you find these special commission Backman wagons. And uh, we've got no affiliation with TMC. It's just a, a link to help you out to find them. Don't forget to tickle that like button. Also share this video too, and let other people know about the video content here on the channel. And if you haven't already done so, do consider subscribing and clicking the bell for all notifications. And you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. You can also head on over to Patreon to uh, help us make the videos that you want to see. And we've got a full range of merchandise available from our online store, from hoodies to mugs, to books and also forthcoming we've got the Acura Scale Special Commission of the Monday Club Wagon. But until next time you take great care of yourself and this is me Jenny Kirk saying happy modelling, bye for now. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, OORail.co.uk, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky 107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMR ish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Graham Foster, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, and NI Railways 4000 class. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.